Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for some more time right here in God's Word. Our call out today goes to Michael Howells, one of our subscribers and partners from Lakeville, Minnesota. Michael, thank you so much for your partnership in the gospel. We cannot do this without guys like you at our back. And by the way, Michael threw a book of the Bible into the hat for our next book. Uh, some of you already know that we do an Old Testament book and then we jump to the New Testament and we kind of go back and forth until we find our way all the way through the Bible. He recommended Galatians, which was also on my mind, so we're going to do that next. But we'll start talking about that in a couple of weeks. But for today, we're still in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31 reads, And if the peoples of the land, that means foreigners, if the peoples of the land bring in goods or any grain on the Sabbath day to sell, we will not buy from them on a Sabbath or a holy day. Think of Sabbath kind of like the instatement of blue laws. Uh, if some of you are old enough to understand what a blue law is. But these were days of rest, days where the people of Israel did not do things in dedicated time to the Lord. And it says, we will forego the crops of the seventh year. Now that's called a sabbatical year. The seventh year was a special year, a sabbatical year, and the exaction of every debt, of course, on that year. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, the section from verses 30 all the way down to the end of the chapter, verse 39, lists some specific changes the people agreed to make as a community with God. And I have broken these down into three essential parts. First, marital purity, which we dealt with yesterday. Second, Sabbath renewal, which is today. And then third, temple priority, which we will address tomorrow. Today, we're going to focus on the second tenet, which is Sabbath renewal. So let me try to explain in the simplest of terms what was happening with this tenet. The people here read the old rules, the Mosaic law, regarding the Sabbath and the sabbatical year, to which they had not been adhering. They were convicted about what they read in Scripture. But by their time, the cultural situation had radically changed. For example, the Sabbath in the Persian Empire was not a thing. Uh, Persian people didn't practice the Sabbath, which made inactivity very challenging since a lot of commerce happened on the weekend, which is what they're talking about here. It's kind of like it is in our time. There's a lot of business that happens on the weekend because we're busy during the week, right? Also, regarding the sabbatical year practices, most didn't have slaves that they could release or even loaned out money that they could free people from debt, primarily because they were slaves and were very in debt as a people <laughs> to the emperor of the land. So this practice, too, had to be tailored a little bit to fit their situation. But here is what I like about their agreements to this tenet. They understood that just because their situation had changed and culture had changed, which was caused by their sin, <laughs> FYI, this did not mean God's commands were any less relevant. So because they were so committed to the process of recommitment, they attempted to find the most meaningful way to make it work instead of just opting out of this particular command. And I think this is where some believers are tempted to make a critical compromise. So let me explain. You know, often when we read scripture or a scripture that convicts us, and then we know it challenges our thinking and it's gonna demand a change, we get to make a critical choice in that moment, don't we? We can either reject the scripture and dismiss it as, well, culturally irrelevant, which many do, or we can accept it and engage the scripture, finding a way, some way, any way to apply the principle to our everyday lives. Now, the latter is what the people of Israel do here. But this is what we should do as well. Choosing just to punt on scripture and calling it irrelevant is always irreverent. Hope you remember that. <laughs> in our time today, we encounter the same challenge in applying this particular tenet. For example, we don't practice the Sabbath exactly like ancient Israel did, but we should take a day for rest and worship dedicated to the Lord. The New Testament instructs us to do this. Also, we don't have a direct equivalent to the sabbatical year, but there are ethical and spiritual lessons in this practice for us. For example, our faith should shape how we think about and interact with society today. And this is why I do what I do with you every single day. I work hard each day to study and interpret and find application in the text so that you 
can find immediate and simple ways to apply the scripture to your everyday life. But here's the deal. The tenets of scripture are only effective when you actually do them. <laughs> they have an effect when you read and then understand and feel and then actually act upon it. So like these people did here, let's make that agreement together. Can we? I mean, the next time you're convicted about scripture, I want you to act a little quicker and find any way possible to live it out in your everyday life. And don't worry, I'm with you in it. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else. And I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.